In this video, we'll look at the topic of trigonometric substitutions, and usually for this topic, the integral contains the following terms. So please look at the terms that are given in parts A, B, C, and um, usually when the integral contains either one of the three forms here, and um, my advice is really as an advice that, for example, in part A, if it contains the term square root of a squared minus x squared, you can try to use the substitution x equals a times sine theta or a times cosine theta. And similarly for part B, if you're looking at the square root of a squared plus x squared, you can try to use x equals a tangent theta. And uh, similarly for part C, if it is the square root of x squared minus a squared, you can try to use x equals a secant theta. It is a hint which means uh, you can try to use this hint, and uh, usually it works out. But uh, the disadvantage is that this method usually is quite slow, and sometimes it is possible to have second method which is quicker than that. Of course, you are free to use the method you prefer. Let's look at some example. So please look at the current example where the integral contains the term square root of nine minus x squared. And based on my previous hint, um, this form, we can try to use the trigonometric substitution where a um, is 3 now um, and x equals uh, 3 times sine theta. And please note that uh, the 9 is essentially a squared based on my previous page. So that's why we can use a equals 3 uh, down here for the x substitution. And uh, usually the natural second step is to write down the dx, which is uh, 3 cosine theta d theta. And of course, uh, 3 cosine theta is really the derivative of uh, 3 times sine theta. And um, now, the fact for this substitution is that we have to convert all the variables in x into something in theta uh, for the integral. And uh, let's do it together. The bottom of the fraction, which is the denominator, uh, is going to be 3 times sine theta, the whole thing square, because we have to put in x square here. And the dx term is actually done in the second line on the right-hand side, which is 3 times cosine theta d theta. And let's look at the top, which has the square root of uh, 9 minus x squared. And um, let's look at it together now. So um, square root of 9 minus x squared, we can put it as square root of 9 minus open bracket 3 times sine theta close bracket square, right? And um, you have to uh, be careful about the algebra. Then you'll see that you can actually take out the square root quite effectively uh, simply by the use of x equals 3 times sine theta. So um, Please take a look at how we can do that. Now at this stage, I hope you can see something which is very familiar to you. We have the square root of something. The something inside the square root is 9 times 1 minus sine square theta. The fact is that you see, there should be a famous identity in your mind um, for the 1 minus sine square theta. This one equals cosine square theta, right? And uh, it's taking the square root of 9 times cosine square theta. So um, it means the answer should be 3 cosine theta, right? And um, please take a look at this. If you don't use the substitution 3 times sine theta or 3 times cosine theta, you'll probably get into trouble where you cannot cancel the square root term. And usually when you have a square root of a big expression inside the integral, it's not an easy integration usually. And um, as you can see, the advantage of using 3 times sine theta is to really simplify the integral by taking out the square root. And let's come back to the left hand side. Now the top is just 3 times cosine theta, right? And uh, let's do some cancellation together. Please take a look at the top now. You have three copies of 3 and two copies, I'm sorry. And the bottom also has two copies of 3, right? And so it means the constants are cancelled out. So basically, you are left with the integral of cosine square theta divided by sine square theta d theta. And let's think about how to do it. And that's the reason why for such problems, usually the calculation can be a little bit long because of the fact that if you are left with an integral in theta, sometimes the trigonometric integral can be difficult and sometimes it can be easier. It really depends on the problem. And for this case, um, I trust that you're able to find a way to get the answer. Uh, we have to try something on our own. The fact is that cosine theta divided by sine theta is equal to cotangent theta, right? So it means the integral inside uh, contains a cotangent square theta. And let's go to the next step. So you see, you have to think about how to integrate cotangent square theta. It is not an easy integration if you don't observe that you have to make use of a famous identity. The identity that need is uh, 1 plus cotangent square theta actually equals cosecant square theta. 
And this one is in parallel with um, identity is more familiar to you, which is one plus tangent square theta equals um, secant square theta, right? Um, they are parallel to each other. So let's make use of the top line, in the green color. So uh, it means that now we have to integrate something like cosecant square theta minus one. And let's see how to do it. Uh, the second term is clear because you see uh, the second term is just the same as minus theta, right? When you integrate this one with respect to the variable um, theta. And the top term may be not that familiar to you, but please think about it yourself. I believe you must have seen that. Cotangent, cotangent theta, the derivative of it is actually the same as minus cosecant square theta. So it means what? It means that based on this fact, the double purple star, we understand that if we try to integrate the right hand side, which is the secant square theta, I think the answer should be minus cotangent theta, right? So you see, essentially, it is the final answer to our problem, but because the problem at the beginning, um, I was actually using the variable x. So you have to convert everything back to the variable x from the theta. Let's see how we can do that. So let's look at the right hand side now. Uh, please recall that we are starting the problem with the substitution x equals three times sine theta. And it means um, x over three is the same as sine theta. And we'll use a high school type of problems. Um, well. Um, e essentially, if it is a right angle triangle given to you with the angle theta um, attached here, uh, the fact is that three is actually the longest length of the right angle triangle if you have an expression x over three equals sine theta. And it's actually the vertical length, right? So um, let's do the remaining. You see the bottom, which is the base of the right angle triangle, uh, can be found by the use of the Pythagoras theorem, which is uh, three square minus x square which is of course square root of nine minus x square, right? And um, let's do something about that. And let's figure out what is the cotangent theta. And I hope you understand the fact that cotangent theta must be the same as the fraction where the denominator is x and the top is square root of nine minus x square, which is the base length of the right angle triangle. So um, let's come back to the left-hand side. I'll copy my answer uh, from the triangle there for the cotangent theta. And let's look at the meaning of the theta. Uh, the theta is what? You see, we have to do the inversion directly from x over three equals uh, sine theta. Theta is actually inverse sine of x over three, right? So I just put it up here. With the second term on the left-hand side is uh, inverse sine of x over three. This one represents um, the theta in terms of x. And up to this stage, um, the problem is finished.